Hey, burst arms there. Uh, before I get started on sandblasting, something I want to point out uh, for everybody is uh, to point out all the imperfections within the finish. You can tell where it's it's all scraped up and and beat up from so much use. And that way, since since I am doing a, a flat black finish, once I get done, it'll still look very similar, but uh, the finish on it will look so much better once I'm done. So anyway, that's uh, just what I wanted to show you. And then uh, next, we're going to get started on uh, actually sandblasting it, and then we're going to get it all prepped and ready for some molly resin. All right, first time, sorry, we got all the parts that we're going to throw into the sandblasting cabinet. Uh, remember that we're using the aluminum oxide, uh, anywhere from like 60 to 80 grit. You're not really using sand. give you guys a sample of what I've done. This is the frame and the barrel. Uh, looks fairly decent. So uh, that way we can put a nice coating on it and uh, clean up any imperfections on here and then uh, it'll be good to go. Alright now, just as I've stated earlier, um, when you're going to do this, my gloves are fairly dirty from uh, sandblasting it and dealing with it before I I uh, put it in the cabinet. So you're going to throw these away. You're going to get some new gloves on. And remember, from from now on, from this point until you're done baking it, you don't want to handle any parts of the firearm with your bare hands because the the oil's on your hands. And what we're going to do now is we're going to get some uh, acetone. Here, I'm going to use a fairly clean rag. Now, this is the uh, baking sheet that I use to put inside of the sandblasting cabinet as well as the, the sheet that I put inside of the oven when I cook it. So uh, each time that I uh, prep it to get it ready to go in the oven, I always, just to make sure and get all of that crud off of here, So that way when you're baking it, I don't know if you can see that, you can actually see where some parts came off. Uh, it was from either a leftover residue of uh, maybe the molly resin or if it's uh, leftover from using the aluminum oxide. So, all right. Now that we got that good and clean and we know that it's not gonna, not gonna pass off any uh, extra particles we're going to set that to the side and now we're going to start in on the firearms making sure that they get nice and clean and you can actually see it get wet the the areas of cleaning it'll actually get wet and then you'll see it dry up very quickly so that way you know it's working. You can see how dark that gets, how important this step is to make sure you get all of the stuff off. All of that uh, aluminum oxide off of the, the parts, otherwise it won't stick very well. Alright, so we're just about to finish up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let you guys go. Um, all I have left to do is just uh, finishing up the receiver and the barrel. And then what we'll do next is we're going to start uh, 
to apply the molly resin. So I'm here just real quick to show you what I've done with the muzzle brake here. Uh, one thing that I had mentioned earlier about how it screws off of the barrel here on the tip, and it's designed for a right-handed shooter. I've actually gone through and I drummled out the piece right here on, on the right side to now where when you're shooting it, it'll actually, you can adjust it for a left or right-handed person. So anyway, I, I tested it, fits on there nice and, and uh, smoothly, and you won't be able to tell a difference really once uh, I put the uh, molly resin on there. But as you can see now, there's, let me see if I can get a better, there's two notches in it. There you go, now you can see it. So there's one for the left, one for the right. So when you switch a user, all you have to do real fast is press in on this little button right here and you can switch over real quick between a left and right handed shooter and not have it uh, have as much of a kick and you can have your uh, side alignment back a lot faster alright just real quick bird's arms here just real quick uh, make sure that you uh, preheat your parts and make sure they're around 100 to 120 degrees uh, right now it's right around like 17 degrees outside so uh, I've got to heat them up pretty well before I even start doing some molly resin so uh, just a, a quick note you don't want to apply it cold because then it, it has a greater potential of running on you and then it won't look very good with uh, how the uh, molly resin comes out sorry for not showing you earlier uh, this is what the parts look like after they've been baked in the oven. Remember to put them in for an hour to an hour and a half at 300 to 325 degrees. Let's see, much nicer looking, smooth. 